Stephen A. Smith has seemingly done a 180 very quickly. It looks a little suspicious to me, actually, on the Caitlin Clark story. He went from talking about it from one angle to a totally different angle in just a few days. And the reason I want to make this video is I think the second way he's talking about the Caitlin Clark story is actually very irresponsible and it's going to create a whole bunch more division. And it's frankly just disappointing. And I don't know why Stephen A. Smith is doing this, but I'll show the first clip here, have some commentary. And I'll show the final clip, and I'll talk about why I think it's actually very divisive for him to do this. The idiocy of Team USA Women's Basketball. How dare you make this decision? It's stupid. The point is this. Those rosters, right, those players were on there. Do you know that Christian Leitner also was chosen ahead of Shaquille O'Neal and Alonzo Mourning? You know why? He was a two-time national champion. He was a Wooden Award winner. And he was white. And he had his own cachet. He brought it to the table. So I played that video there to contrast. That was Stephen A. a few days ago. Now listen to him just one day ago. She is a white young lady. And she's been a magnet in a way that has benefited the league in ways that others have not, even though their efforts have been worthy and deserving of being as celebrated, if not even more celebrated. But Stephen A, you used as an example, this is what you said, that Christian Leitner apparently was put on that dream team because, in part because he was white. And that was what you used to argue the Caitlin Clark phenomenon. I don't even really agree with Stephen A's framing there. But he's saying something completely different now. And this next part of the clip, this is actually what I want to focus on the most. This is, I think, some of the worst stuff, actually, and the most problematic. And it's a reminder that no matter how far we believe that we have advanced as a society, there's still such a long way to go. Because in the end, if you're white, you're bright, you're right. And as a result, the shine comes your way in the eyes of a lot of people in America. First thing I thought when I saw this clip was posted to X is ESPN wants this Caitlin Clark story to drag on for years. I thought there was a chance that after Caitlin Clark made a statement saying something to the effect of I denounce racism and misogyny and stuff like that, that is that people use her name or whatever she said, that that might be the end of it. I mean, I didn't, I kind of thought that, but as soon as I saw Stephen A. Smith say this, I mean, come on. This is going to last so long, I think. I would even speculate. This is a total guess, but this is the way it looks like to me. Someone at ESPN talked to Stephen A. Smith and said, hey, we don't like your previous take. We want you to take the more social justice warrior route here and talk about racial injustice in terms of the Caitlin Clark story because we think we're going to run with that for a few years. I mean, it seems like that. He just did a total 180. Look at those two clips talking about how Christian Leitner was putting that team in part because he was white and he would get all these new fans and stuff. Again, I don't necessarily agree with that framing, but then he comes here and says, oh, it's actually bad. And Caitlin Clark, the fact that she's white is taking away opportunities for other people. And I'm going to somewhat speculate here a little bit, even though I'm not, I don't necessarily believe this, but do you know that one conspiracy theory, it's kind of a conspiracy where people say, oh, there's a global elite class that's kind of above everybody else. And they want um, like the regular population to be fighting over issues that aren't economic, like culture war issues, climate change related issues, maybe just bickering back and forth, like racial division, uh, sex, like division men versus women, stuff like that. It seems like this would be a clip that if you believe that conspiracy theory, this that's what this looks like. This looks like a rich guy, Stephen A. Smith, coming on here and saying, hey, we need to keep fighting about this because this clip from Stephen A. Smith, this is division. This is not going to bring people together. This is, we need to keep talking about this. This is not over. This discussion, even though this discussion about race has been happening a ton for the last 10 years, even probably a little bit longer, but are we going to have this discussion for our entire lives? These racial divisions just trying to go against each other. Like I think what Morgan Freeman said is more accurate that we have to stop talking about this, but not like, I don't think we need to just outright never talk about it, but I, this is a clip that you would look at as someone who believes that that there's like a, an economic class above everybody 
that wants the common folk not focusing on economics, not focusing on wealth inequality, and bickering back and forth about is there the right percentage of African Americans and Latinos on TV and stuff like that. And if you're someone who thinks that there's being like division sown in the population intentionally, again, I don't, I think some people do that, but I don't think there's a kind of coordinated attack on that front. But if you are someone who thinks that, watch this next clip because look where he takes it. He takes this issue. Watch what Stephen A. Smith says next. Let's transition. Very uncomfortable to touch on, but just factually correct. You have somebody that's a presidential candidate. What is his claim to fame? Make America great again. What have people interpreted that to mean? Make America white again. These are the things that critics have said. Quick sidebar, I personally am so fed up with the everything is a dog whistle argument. You're just making an argument up. He's, it's make America great again. You're adding, you're just changing the meaning of it and then attacking that as an argument. That's like the definition of a straw man. Not everything is a dog whistle. Let people speak. He has his supporters spanning the tens of millions. There are others on the other side having tens of millions of the supporters on their side. What has that led to? A divide. It is not a divide that is created. It is a divide that's illuminated because it's highlighting and showing that it's been in existence all along. It hasn't gone anywhere. But why even bring this to the presidential election coming up? This is so suspect. Again, I'm speculating. This, to me, looks like someone at ESPN told Stephen A. Smith, "Talk, make, make this political, make this a bigger issue. We want to keep talking about this. I think this Caitlin Clark, quote-unquote, culture war is now going to last for years. This is going to be just a ratings bonanza, and people are going to talk about it, and people are going to argue all this, and it's just going to be somewhat entertaining, but also so annoying, so irrelevant, at least for basketball. Caitlin Clark is probably looking at this being like, this sucks. I'm like basically forced to just talk about it. I want to play basketball. I don't want to talk about this for my entire career. That's what it looks like is going to happen. And look, if these networks like ESPN, I mean, there's obviously talking about sports. If they really want to talk about social justice and like real world issues, politics and what the actual divide is, it's called wealth inequality. This our idea that a bunch of white people are going to just spar online or whatever with a bunch of black people. That's not where the real divide is. 78% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Most white people live paycheck to paycheck, and most black people live paycheck to paycheck. So the real divide is between the people that own have all the money. This is true. This is not like the conspiracy brain part of it. The, the top 10% of Americans own 93% of the stock market. And how about this one? The top 1% of Americans have more wealth than the entire middle class. So if you want to talk about social issues or making positive change in the world at ESPN, talk about wealth inequality. Why do the rich keep getting rich richer? Why does our economy have all this money that flows up to rich people? Why do we keep going into national debt to seemingly fund rich people? More and more debt, more and more wealth inequality, more printing of money, all flows into assets. There's a pandemic in 2020. Somehow rich, wealthy people got richer during the pandemic as so many people got laid off. This idea that we're going to keep arguing about racial division or division between like men versus women, just constantly bicker back and forth about it, it's getting us nowhere. The real divide in America by far is between the people who have all the money and everybody else who's like just trying to get by, just trying to live paycheck to paycheck. Like I said, almost 80% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. I'm not saying this, by the way, as like an anti-rich person thing or pro-socialism, anti-capitalism. I'm just criticizing our society that we have let this get too far. You should have some. We have let wealth inequality grow too much. But apparently these networks want that white guy who gets home from work after his nine to five to talk online or bicker back and forth on Twitter with a black woman that just got back from work. And they want to talk online about how do we fix racial division? How do we fix racial tension in America when both the people are living paycheck to paycheck? That's what it seems like Stephen A. Smith with this, with this message and ESPN wants us to talk about for the next 10 or 15 years. Maybe Caitlin Clark is just popular on her own. There was no meeting of white people who collectively decided, hey, let's make this Caitlin Clark the WNBA star and it'll trigger a bunch of people. That never happened. Maybe people just like her. I don't know why. I only recently became aware of her, 
But maybe people just like her style. They like the way she plays the game. Whatever. And by the way, do you know who else people like? And I'm sure people online have made this point a ton in this like kind of culture battle that's happening. They also like LeBron James. People also like Simone Biles. They like Tiger Woods. They like Roger Federer. They like a bunch of athletes for a whole bunch of different reasons. It's so unfair to just say that Caitlin Clark, because she's white in the WNBA and having all this success, that it's because of her skin color. Maybe, like I said, maybe she just has a style. She's fan-friendly for whatever reason. When I was growing up, the athlete that everyone wanted to watch the most was Tiger Woods. He would wear that red shirt, and he would have like those Sunday comebacks. That was the guy that everybody wanted to watch. We would all sit in front of the TV and cheer on Tiger Woods. It wasn't because of his skin color. He was cool. He had like a cool swag. He had a cool walk. He had those fist pumps and stuff. He had all these iconic moments. It was fun to cheer for Tiger Woods. I do not buy that people like Caitlin Clark because she's white. Like, I, I'm not saying that no one does, but I don't buy that. Every famous athlete, really, not everybody, a lot of famous athletes growing up, Michael Jordan, everybody just liked him because he was cool and he was dominant and he would win. People like Tom Brady for similar reasons. Or what about Jeremy Lin? Remember Lin Sanity? That one year, he was massive. He was Asian. And people all, like, really wanted to watch him. It was so fun seeing him hit those threes. That was great. Sometimes people just like somebody. They just catch fire. They have a certain, like I said, style to them or whatever. There's some reason that even if they're not the best player in the world, like Jeremy Lin, it was probably never even, like, in the top 10 of best players in the NBA. But that little run he had, everyone wanted to watch him. Tim Tebow had that run where he was never the greatest NFL quarterback, but he had those comebacks. He just caught a moment. People just liked him. I don't believe that this is all about the color of their skin, and I don't think it's fair to Caitlin Clark and just for the discourse that people that are making it all about her color of her skin, maybe there's just a whole bunch of people in America right now that are caught up in Caitlin Clark fever, whatever you want to call it, and... They just like her, and they like watching her, and they think it's fun to watch her play basketball. So wrapping this all up and bringing it back to Stephen A. Smith, I have no idea why he decided to bring this conversation and this topic to Donald Trump and make America great again, meaning to some make America white again. I think that's so disappointing. It looks like something that could create more division and ultimately I think will not be helpful. But with that said, thank you for watching this video. Like it if you'd want to, and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Have a good day.